not live from the studio of Northwest <laughs> Florida School of Biblical Studies. This is Guy Montgomery, your host of Have a Bible Question, normally live, but not tonight. Uh, joined in the studio tonight, Troy Spradlin, Jeff Orr, and Ray Brantley. Troy, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, brother. How are you? I'm doing well. A little frustrated, but... I, you know, I'm learning. It is what it is. <laughs> it is, man. It is. Uh, so Jeff uh, texted us earlier right before our meal that we do on Tuesday nights. And I was like, man, this is going to be a great night. Great show. I mean, we're eating some chicken and some pork and some baked beans. And I loved yeah. your response on that text, by the way. What? Whenever he explained what was going on, you said two words. Do what? <laughs> <laughs> and I get this text from Jeff and he's like, uh internet's out <laughs> and so long story short they're putting in some new lines to help us it which will be a good thing in the end except the contractor for um cox communications the person they contracted cut the existing line so there is absolutely zero internet nothing we can do about it they said it will be tomorrow before it's fixed and so we decided uh, let's record it, and uh, we won't go as long because we won't have the uh, audience interaction, but um, be able to still have a program tonight, and Jeff's going to take it and go to his house and try and release it, and so at least something will go out this evening. And then we're going to be down a couple weeks because um, you're going to be gone next week, right? Yes, we're going down to see Andrea's family down in her hometown, West Palm Beach. Haven't been down there in a while, so looking forward to it. And then um, I'm going to be missing a week. And not where are you going? Be able to be here. Uh, we're going to go down to Orlando. All right. I'm going to be be away, and uh, so uh, going to have Jeff Orr at the house watching things for me. You know, since we're putting it out that I'm going to be gone, just, <laughs> just for clarity's sake. Just so everybody knows, there will still be an armed person in the house. <laughs> I know they might look at me and say, "Ah, no problem." <laughs> but uh, no, we got family vacation coming up, yeah. and and we were talking about it, and you know. It, to, to do this week in and week out, uh, I think for the most part, you know, we've been doing it for over a year now. Is that right? Yeah, it was in May. Yeah, in uh, the May of 2020, that's when we started. So, you know, for about a year, we've missed very few weeks. And, um, it, and usually for technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's for that. I mean, we've gone to great pains that when we are traveling to try and do the show anyway. But um, it, it's kind of time for a little bit of a break, and we, we – uh, pray and hope that that won't discourage any of our audience. Uh, we're going to be back. Uh, that'll be about June fifteenth. Uh, is, is that right? June fourth? No, nope, no, nope, that's not the right date. What, what's the date going to be? We need uh, to figure that out. I think the let's see, it'll it'll be the first next week, fifteenth. The eighth. Uh, okay, so we so we will be back the fifteenth. Yeah, the fifteenth. Yeah. All right. So um, that seems so far away, but I it's, know. Mm-hmm. Well, it's only a couple weeks, and um, it's some time that we need to to rest a little bit and. Uh, it'll help out uh, even on some projects around here for the guys that, that are here still working uh, to be able to catch up on some stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just exciting, though. How many how many videos do we have now where we've broken down segments on YouTube, roughly? Uh, probably about 450 or something like that. Wow. A lot, yeah. Wow. So that's 450 50 questions yeah. that we've dealt with or topics that we've dealt with. And some of them are a little repetitive, but... Yeah. Those are resources that are available on our YouTube channel that you can, uh, and, and what I find encouraging, we're having more and more subscribers all the time. Uh, I get notifications through the email. And so people are subscribing to that channel, but y- you can share this, you know, if it's a something that, you know, you're talking to somebody and they have a question, you can either point them there or you can go to the YouTube channel and text them the link so that they are able on their phone to pull up the video. I mean, it's a great resource and, so it's hard to believe uh, how far we've come in a year, and it's because of those that are listening to the podcast as well as getting on here live on Tuesday nights and uh, just really appreciate that so much. And we want you to know we miss you. <laughs> as you may be missing the show, we miss you because we, we very much enjoy that interaction with each and every one of you and appreciate you all so very much. Even to a point that we said we were going to save some of the questions rather than to mm-hmm. deal with them on a pre-recording. We're going to save them for a few weeks from now, some of the ones that have been submitted because we want you to be able to be a part of it as we answer your questions. You know, that's one of the things I do love about this program is that interaction because a lot of times uh, the comments that are made help a lot of times amplify or explain or really bring out 
uh, more aspects of the question or the topic we're dealing with. Yeah, and sometimes clarify, you know, because we, exactly. we, we're take it one way and then somebody, yeah. you know, brings it a different direction. Uh-huh. Uh, so, you know, it, and so in this year of time, it, it's really strange to think about last year with COVID, but then now, I mean, it, in a year's time, look at what's happened with our partnership with Good News Today since then, uh-huh. because we had this going before that. And um, not only that, but we've brought back the Have a Bible Question television show that we're in 20 markets now. I mean, and, and that's... That, that's to me kind of kind of neat that we're able to broadcast this week <laughs> we get a lot of bible correspondence courses started because of this we're up to 110 something like that yeah uh praise course, the lord bible correspondence courses and, and you know not all of them are uh non-christians some of them are members of the church but that's fine too because we're strengthening their faith and i had this lady call me yesterday out of sykeston missouri uh, i won't use her name but um, she's an older lady, and she signed her and her two sisters up for Bible correspondence courses. And uh, we were talking, and come to find out, it's actually where my great uncle preaches. She oh, had no idea that. that there was a where, <laughs> where he used to preach. And yeah. um, it, and you know, it's really such a small world. But we have. Uh, then I had another lady call from Jacksonville, and she doesn't have a way to get to services, and she was wanting to have information. She wanted to know if we knew of a congregation that we were affiliated with in that area. And, uh, and really in her, the way she put it was, do we have a campus or something over there? But, uh, I was able to tell her I could get in touch with a local congregation of the church of Christ. Great. And so, you know, 20 markets, Gainesville, I'm going to see if I can name them since we got it tonight, <laughs> Gainesville, Florida. Oh, I can do it, Ray. Don't doubt me. <laughs> Gainesville, Florida, confidence. Jacksonville, Florida, Tallahassee, Florida, um, Panama city. Pensacola Mobile. Then we're in Albany, Georgia. We're in Columbus, Georgia. Dothan, Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. We're in Meridian, Mississippi. Columbus, Tupelo. Jackson, Mississippi. Biloxi, Mississippi. New Orleans. Monroe. Um, Chattanooga. Paducah, Cape Girardeau. We need some Knox, music. Knoxville. <laughs> Knoxville. <laughs> and I'm missing one. I'm, I'm missing one. And I can't think what it is. Jeff, come on. Did you already say the Mobile Pensacola? Yes. I, of okay. course. Okay. I mean, that's where we are. Keep moving north. I was I was looking at uh, how many views we've got. Uh, and went, Knoxville. Uh, what, what, what am I what missing? The, Chatt- did I say Chattanooga? Did yeah. you say K A R D uh, out of uh, which one am I missing, Ray? Arkansas. Uh, are you looking for just us or us? Just Indiana? us. Uh, what's the other one? Because Indianapolis is um, D and T, right? Yeah. And Lansing is D&T. getting your mic. And Lansing, Michigan is D and T as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, mm. there's one other. I'll yeah. think of it later. But I mean, when you start thinking about it, I mean that's all those it, it, it's roughly somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of like 20 million households we have a potential reach of every single sunday morning when we broadcast television station the television program and what we were talking about and this is i guess this is practically our uh, our anniversary uh, from the, of the first is it well, how about, about that yeah, we're it celebrating was, our was, anniversary that's why i cooked all the special yeah. food there you, there you go that's why Hope. we had to cook food we had and the celebration is 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 a it, it is was a messed up internet <laughs> now what, what i have here is the info on our page and it mentions that join june 3rd well it says 2019 but i think that was that was something, something different else. yeah and uh and six, two year anniversary <laughs> 6300 views but uh so far on those how many 6300 that's wow. when i was uploading the shows first remember and then we started uploading yeah the, so I mean, uh, you know, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of lot of potential reach. We got the the yeah. Roku channel, we got yeah. the Apple TV channel. I mean, just just a lot of things, and you know, it's because of the sports of the school. And you know, tonight's a good opportunity just just to mention that a little bit because yeah. I mean, that's what it's about is being able to do the work. All right, Bible topic time. Since we can't have them submit the question, I'm going to start one. Funniest things that happened in the Bible. What is the funniest thing you know of? I'm going to start, though, because we were talking about this before the show started. Balaam and his donkey. I was preaching on this the other night, 
and, and as I'm trying to preach the account and I'm reading, I'm telling you, I, I, I was, I was laughing and, and, you know, it's one of these situations that, um, and give me my book and chapter for me on this so we can numbers uh, 22, I believe. Thank you. Numbers chapter 22. It, it, and it's a great account that I think a lot of people overlook. It's actually mentioned, uh, in the new Testament a couple of times because it talks about Balaam and his greed and his unrighteousness right. when Balaam was actually a prophet of God, a Gentile prophet of God that allowed his greed and unrighteousness to get in the way. And, um, God ends up using a donkey to talk to him. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's just, you know, when you think of that, uh, Ray, what do you think of, uh, <laughs> I just go to uh, Shrek and it's like donkey, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in my mind, that's what comes up, you know, and, and, you know, it, it, and to me, what's so humorous about it is, you know, the first time the donkey talks to him, Balaam answers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then the donkey replies, and then Balaam answers again. And it's like, well. <laughs> and so if, if you want to talk about funny things that happen in the Bible, even though, and, and, you know, Tom Holland had a book years ago that's why is it funnier when I shouldn't be laughing? You know, <laughs> th there are those occasions, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's one, that, that would be mine, all right? Who wants to go next? I will. Uh, my favorite, as soon as you said that, I was thinking one of my favorite scenes in the Bible is in uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 18, verse 27, when Elijah challenges the prophets of Baal to a showdown. And he says, we're going to build an altar, and you guys can go first. And so they start doing all their things, and they're jumping up and down, and they're shouting and screaming. And the best line to me, I just I find it hilarious is in 1 Kings 18, verse 27, he's, it says, At noon, Elijah began making fun of them, and he says, Pray louder. Baal must be a god. Maybe he's daydreaming <laughs> or using the toilet or traveling somewhere. Maybe he's asleep and you need to wake him up. <laughs> I just, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't the help. taunting. Exactly. I just, I can't help but admire Elijah, you know, for saying that. And, and he knows, he knows what's going on. And so I can just see him over there going, y'all need to jump a little louder. Y'all need to scream. <laughs> you do or everything, whatever. It's just hilarious to me. I love, I love that one. Jeff, you got one? Yes. I have always got a chuckle out of the sons of Sceva in Acts chapter 19. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, and, and it kind of reminds me of what, uh, what so, Jesus said in Matthew 7. Uh, many will say to me that day, have we not? done many things and you know and one of the things you mentioned cast out demons and i i think of this particular instance this is in uh, acts chapter 19 and uh, the way that luke describes them is kind of funny it says and a certain of the vagabond jews exorcist took upon them uh to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the lord jesus saying we adjure you by jesus whom paul preacheth and in other words they Paul preaches you, but I don't. Uh, they didn't. And and it mentions here that there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, uh, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? I just, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they get a whooping, don't they? <laughs> and it mentions that, that the man in whom the evil spirit was, uh, was and there were seven of them, le leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And It is funny when you and, think about it. Uh, and the reaction of the city, uh, it almost done. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear, fear fell on them all and the name of the lord jesus was magnified so so i wonder if years later somebody's <laughs> like oh i know you you are that guy's got beat up <laughs> hey, show me your scars <laughs> dude what what are you gonna do to me <laughs> i remember that night you went running through the three yeah. through the streets naked you got beat up but you know all kidding aside <laughs> there there's there's these events that happen yeah. that when i read them i think about movie plots mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and and i don't i Certain, let me clarify. Yeah, and you're not belittling this. the Bible. I'm not belittling the Bible. I'm certainly not saying that exorcisms and things happen today. But doesn't that sound almost like something that would happen on one of these scary movies where they go in and yeah, I can just see what's that guy's name from Airplane or whatever it was. Leslie Nielsen. I mean, I, it yeah. looks like a Leslie Nielsen type thing. You know, it's just I've never seen that movie. I, I haven't either, but I know who Leslie <laughs> Nielsen is. Yeah, that guy's hilarious. I've actually seen it. I shouldn't have though. <laughs> 
I find myself like regretting. I, I we're to a point we watch. I told you the other day when I was telling people about your YouTube channel, we watch YouTube more than anything, just because I'm disappointed in TV and movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they. I mean, that's a whole other subject. We could go for hours on that. Tell me about it, Ray. <laughs> you got one? They were coming to me. Let's see. I was trying to think of them while you were going over there, and I was like, that's kind of funny, but it's not supposed to be. But it's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, mine, uh, we've talked about it before on here, is uh, who is the wicked judge of Bimelech that they talk about? Yes. Uh, when he's going to die, the woman drops a millstone on his head from the tower, <laughs> and he calls out, please stab me through with a sword so it's not going to be said that I'm killed of a woman. And that's the only thing everybody remembers about him to this day. <laughs> that he was killed by a woman yeah <laughs> it's just i don't know kind of funny the, the irony you know it, it, you you talked i think you brought up ehud recently you know and, and to <laughs> me know, it's funny, funny that his guards just thought he was in there using the bathroom and, and that's why <laughs> and, that, and meanwhile he's being assassinated well i'd like to be a fly on the wall whenever samuel walks up to saul and Saul he greets him all happy and everything and he says i have done as the lord has commanded and Samuel looks around and goes, oh, really? Well, what's that bleeding of the sheep? I, I would love to see Saul's face. <laughs> you know? what, what, no, 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 no. What I would love to see, <laughs> Saul's hunting down David. He goes to relieve himself in the cave where David and his men are hiding. Uh -huh. And then he leaves the cave. Oh, the look on his face when the he look sees on his face when that David. piece of cloth in David's hand. <laughs> wow. I mean, or when you've been sleeping. And you wake up to see that he has been right and has your staff and sword, wasn't it, or shield, but mm -hmm. that that he had been right next to you. I mean, uh, and, well, the worst, the the funny part of that also, not only the look on his face, is you can imagine what all of Saul's men standing around were going like. <laughs> they're probably trying to hold it in so they don't get in trouble, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh man, one of the another funny one that comes from the book of Judges that I thought about is like yeah, one of the judges that there's only one verse mentioned about him. <laughs> Remember who it was? Yeah, he had the uh he killed him with uh yeah, Shamgar. Shamgar, that's he it. He killed six hundred uh, men with an ox goad. And I'm just imagining one of these old kung fu movies where there's one guy <laughs> against an army and they just come at him one at a time and he kills them over and over and over again. It's like by the time you get to five hundred and ninety nine, what number six hundred say, <laughs> I'm I'm done. I'm going home. <laughs> but no, they just keep dying. You know, it, you know, and we we bring that up because it, it ha we've had some interesting questions come our way, like, you know, when would you when would you like to have lived or you know, what Bible character would we want to be or not want to be? Now, did my brother send you a text or an email on that? No. Because he called me and uh, was, he said, oh, I listened to the show. And by the way, I know who I'd want to be. And so he, and, and now I'm trying to remember who it was. I, was like, here, here, I haven't heard from Lance. Oh, he wants to be, shut out. he wants to be, uh, he said he wanted to be Enoch because Enoch walked with God and he didn't die. He got to go on straight up to heaven. So like Elijah. So yeah. He, uh, so. Know, See, kindred spirits. Being your brother could be in heaven right now with God, <laughs> having never tasted death. And we're all down here suffering. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it, you know, it, it really makes you think. And, and a question like this, you know, about funny events in the Bible. Uh, a lot of people think Bible study is, is boring. And I think there's just this misnomer. And sometimes I think it might just be the attitude that we have going into it. Oh, well, that's a oh. key element to Bible study. You got to have the right attitude. I mean, you really do. You got to approach the Bible. There's several aspects of attitude. And part of that is number one, you need to have a humble attitude. You need to have the kind of attitude that's willing to have an open mind and listen. Because some people come to the Bible, as we've talked about on this program, and they want to put their ideas into the Bible. You got to have the kind of attitude that is also going to uh, be prepared to have your way of thinking challenged, as in, you may have to completely give up some things, make some sacrifice. And so, yeah, there's a lot has to do with studying the Bible and your attitude. Um, somebody might need to help me. You might have to use your phone, Jeff, if you don't have internet, since we don't have internet up here. But uh, I was sitting there last night uh, because one of our instructors for the school, Ben Vick, great teacher, uh, I'm serving as a teacher assistant to him. Uh, yeah, and we wear a lot of hats here. I could be director. I could be instructor. I could be a teacher assistant, but, uh, I'm sitting there monitoring, helping with some of the tech stuff. 
in his course and uh which i don't mind at all because you know i, I like listening and there's a lot of stuff that he says i know and then there's some stuff that it reminds me and then there's some stuff i haven't really really thought about uh i want you to look up from uh uh, uh amos the idea of bears of i won't say bashan um bashan but i can't get it right oh uh, the kind of bashan the kind of bashan but there's a bear okay no, no, no. It's the bears of Assyria. Okay. Anyway, if you start looking up, there's a certain type of bear that's referenced there. And that bear is actually known to be uh, more fierce than a lion. Anyway, he brings that up. So I, I just started looking up about these bears. And I'm like, oh, well, that makes it mean even more in that text, understanding that. And so if we if we just approach our Bible study of, oh, i got to do three, ver- three chapters because I've got to read three or what is it, seven chapters a day to, to read the Bible through in a year. And I'm not knocking people that are doing that. If you're listening to that and that's what you're doing, you know, at least you're reading your Bible. But if we see it as something I've got to do or just to get it done, we really limit ourselves on on truly taking from the text. That's right. Um, I find myself going back and rereading stuff. I find myself looking up words and, and looking up about the the different types of animals that are listed there, you know, and, and, and man, it just brings the text alive. It's well, that's one of the beautiful things about the Bible is that the Bible, um, you're never going to be a master at the Bible. You may know a lot about the Bible, and there's people who can quote it backwards, forwards, and, and entire books and everything else, but still, there's always going to be something. And what I enjoy about being a teacher, a Bible teacher, is the knowledge that you do get from yes. from the Bible. And I am, right now, for example, I'm teaching uh, Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel and at Ooh, that one's Street. Fun. It is. It's one of my favorite prophets. Mm-hmm. You're talking and about I, some passages that are interesting. And very challenging. But um, this is the third time that I have taught Ezekiel on a formal level like this. And I'm seeing things this time that I don't remember seeing from the first two times that I taught it. And it just it makes more and more sense. And that I think that's huge to be able to to understand God's will, to, to understand his nature and things like that, because that's what I'm taking from the book this time is, is God's prophet explaining. I mean, it's the same message over and over and over. And so, and that is the same message we have in the new Testament. God desires that all men repent Acts 1730. He wants to be their people. That's right. I mean, and, and that's where, you know, journaling Bibles can be good. Oh yeah. Uh, getting pens. It, I know there's these like, ways they say now to to mark your bibles and, and maybe that helps some people to be, have a guide of how to mark your bible but i'm going to tell you this me personally i like marking my bible and it just depends on what i'm studying at the time i i, I, you I mean don't like like oops i didn't mean to put that in the camera there <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah you know i mean i just make my notes and i highlight sometimes it depends on what pen i have at the time you know um it, and i think sometimes people get overstressed you know, I've said that about prayer before, uh, that sometimes we get overstressed about saying the right thing that we mm-hmm. hinder ourselves from praying. Yeah. And that, that, you know, bringing that up. So here I just showed you, like, for example, in my case, I got all these different colors and all this other stuff. I do have a sort of kind of guide that I go by, but I, it's not written in stone. You know, if I use, if I think, you know what, I want to use yellow on that. I'm just going to use yellow. Yeah. Even though yellow in my, in my Bible typically means those golden verses, the salvation verses. Um, I use a green highlighter for prophecy and for miracles, but sometimes there may be something. I'm just going to use the green highlighter. Just just do it. Mark up your Bibles. And in fact, I was talking to a brother this morning, and uh, he uh, was telling me that, uh, yeah, I, I'm one of those people that marks in my Bible. And it wasn't like he was ashamed of it, but it was almost like he was like, you know, I'm one of those people. I'm like, that's the best kind. I mean, you don't have to mark in your Bible, but I highly encourage it. Yeah, I mean, make your notes. There's little things like I was having to read Ezekiel for a course I was taking, and and as I was reading the book through, and, and I think sometimes we we miss out. Um, I sat down in in one sitting to read the whole book. Yes, that's the key and right that there. That really helps. And, and I sat down and I started seeing this phrase over and over, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like that. And they will know that I am the Lord. And then I noticed this phrase, and they shall be my people. Mm-hmm. And so I took a, a blue and a red. <laughs> um, I use the color pencils a lot. 
Mm -hmm. And I started highlighting every single time coloring those two phrases, red and blue. And, um, and, and I started just going through there and I was like, man, well, you know, suddenly next thing I know, I had a, a sermon written just based off of this, how important it is of how much God desires to be in a relationship with us. Yes. And how important it is, it is for us to recognize the Lord. Uh, that passage that you were thinking about, I think it's in Amos chapter five and verse 19. And it's talking about people that would try to escape the punishment of God mm -hmm. and the way he described it. And it's not funny, but it's, it's very ironic. We moved on to another uh, uh, yeah, topic. We, but we no, seamlessly this transitioned. <laughs> this had to do with the bear we were talking about. Yeah, ago. yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm, I'm messing with you. Okay. It says, woe to them that desire the, uh, the day of the Lord to what in is it for? For you, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. In other words, they're going to be punished. As as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went in went into the house and leaned on his wall and a serpent bit him. In yeah, so words, he mentions the bear there. Yeah. I and, remember him coming back. The bear is the concept of Assyria, the punishment that, that they were going to experience by their hands. Right. And, and there's something a couple chapters earlier where he's talking about another description in chapter three well okay. you're way overthinking what i asked you to do <laughs> well it, it's very similar because it paints a very vivid picture uh thus saith the lord as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of ear that has just eaten one of his sheep uh, so shall the children of israel be taken out of the that uh taken out that dwell in uh, samaria in the corner of a bed and in damascus in a couch so the whole the goodness and severity of God. Yeah. All right. So back to Bible study. Okay. <laughs> I do well, want to well, say. You asked me to look. <laughs> no, I'm free. You know what that, you know what that shows? It. That shows dedication. He was focused yeah, this whole time. Yeah, y'all moved on. I didn't. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> it. He, so while we're on the subject of marking in our Bibles, I do want to say one thing that I've learned. I think is very important. If you are one that marks in your Bible or wants to start marking in your Bible, let me highly recommend that you do not use ink pens. Mm -hmm. don't use your regular ink pen. Sometimes you'll see that, uh, you mentioned pencils and that's, that's great. You can buy colored pencils and use those to highlight, underline, I write a lot. Uh, they also make, in fact, do you know, uh, even just crayons that, that waxy, mm -hmm. those are great highlighters mm -hmm. and they work real well. It won't. And the thing is it won't go through the page. These pages are typically sturdy enough that they'll handle that. But if you use ink, it will go through. And then there's also what's called an archival pen. Yep. You can get those at um, at Michaels and places like that, and some of these Christian bookstores. They're great, and get get a contrasting color like blue or something that you can really see. Uh, in fact, another thing you mentioned these uh, journaling Bibles; mm -hmm. those are great. Have a lot of space. Normally, a little thicker paper too. A thicker paper, and that's what. Like for example, this one. I mean, it's got. Let me turn it around here. It's just got extra space on the side right here. S something like a Thompson's chain reference has extra space. Look for a Bible that has a little extra space. They even make wide margin Bibles just for that reason, that you can make your notes in there. And, man, it will totally change your Bible study. Yeah, if, I mean, if you spend your time really wanting to study the Word of God, and, and I've been greatly encouraged to see how many people taking classes through our school, uh, you know, this semester being summer, 55 people signed up. Fantastic. You know, and, and you see them and you got those that are preachers. You got those aspiring preachers, but you, you got some that are just um, newer Christians, uh, older Christians, young Christians. I mean, all sorts of folks are in your class. And the common element is that they desire to know the Bible. Amen. And when we can have that desire and we build upon it, we can know the truth. And, and you know, we just need to be encouraging that more and more. And every one of their lives will be deeply blessed through that effort. Uh, they, God will provide rich blessings when you come to know his will. And that's the, that's what we're supposed to do with the Bible. That's what the Bible's for. So we can know his will. Exactly. Um, when we were talking a minute ago, I had another subject I wanted to move on to. And then I forgot it. <laughs> and for the life of me, I just, I can't think of it now. That's another reason why Bible study is good. Cause we forget things. That's exactly right. You know, repetition is a key thing. We were talking about the book of Ezekiel just a minute ago. That's one of the things that is fascinating and, and wonderful about the Bible is in that book alone, he says the same message over 
and over and over. And essentially it is you, uh, my people talking about, uh, Judah, Jerusalem, uh, the Hebrew nation, you have been rebellious and disobedient and you need to repent or I'm going to punish you. And he says it in all kinds of different ways. Yep. It's the same reason why we have four gospel accounts. We have it from four different perspectives. Yep. You think about the writings of Paul and, and Peter and John and James, all of those are saying the same message in just in different ways. So that's a great point, Ray. That's exactly right. So we forget things. And so we need it said to us over and over. And who was it? Was it, uh, Winston Churchill that said, there's three ways that you learn effectively. Essentially. He said, repetition, repetition, repetition. I'm glad you said that because like, I finally remembered what it was. <laughs> See, I was buying you some, you did. some you brain did, time. You did perfect because like it just came to me. <laughs> habits. There we go. I want to talk about habits because we're talking about Bible study. Let's think about habits and how important they are. Um, and what made me think of that is that we're talking, I keep finding myself trying to go over to my laptop. <laughs> uh, have you done that yet during the show? No, I turned off the internet. So I turned off the Wi-Fi. So okay. I, do it. I, I just I keep going over to this. And what it is is – now for a year on Tuesday nights, when I sit in this chair, what do I do? I, I go and I, I flip back and forth between things. I'm looking up things, uh, as far as checking the email for questions coming in, looking at the comments. Mm -hmm. And so I just, while, as soon as I, I throw it to one of you guys, I go to the computer and, and it's like, well, why am I doing that? I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I left it open. So if I want my Bible program, you know, cause I use that a lot during the show, but uh, you know, it, habits. Mm -hmm. uh, this happened uh, to me uh, with uh, patrol cars, Ford Crown Victorias, classic police cruiser, right? Well, I worked night shift. When I got in the car, instinctively, out of habit, I turned the lights on, you know, to dry the headlights. Uh, and so uh, if I went during the daytime to court, you know how many times I had a de dead battery because <laughs> I would instinctively turn the lights on when I cranked the car. Yeah, I, I would just do it, not even mm -hmm. think about it. Well, I stayed out of law enforcement for about a year, and then I went to get into a Crown Vic, and you know the first thing I did even <laughs> after a year is I went and I, I cranked it up. All right, so habits can be formed, and habits can be good or they can be bad. What place in the Christian life should habits um, play, and are they good? Does that sound like a reasonable discussion? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to say y'all like didn't jump on it right then. I first, waiting on somebody. Well, you know, Paul <laughs> Paul talks about I just like, okay, so one of You're the first things buffet. I do, the buffet. You're going to buffet? I buffet my body daily. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to 1 oh. Corinthians 9, yeah. I was going to 1 Corinthians 15 is where I was going, and – I just what I do a lot of times is when we have a word or something, I, first thing I'll do is I'll type it into the search bar of my uh, program here, and it pops up all the different verses, and that a lot of times will lead my thoughts in different ways. And I just put in the word habit, and First Corinthians fifteen thirty three: Do not be deceived; evil company corrupts good habits. Mm -hmm. And so what's what's happening there? You know, we should have the habit to be in the what is the word? The routine of doing good. There's lots of things that a Christian should have the habit of doing. I mean, we're the whole purpose of the New Testament really is to teach us how to live our Christian lives. Right. So one of those things is, you know, going to church or to worship. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to be evangelizing. We need to be benevolent. Uh, there's on and on and on. We need to be hospitable. We need to be kind. Fruit of the Spirit. Uh, there's so many habits that we need to have and this evil company can corrupt that inter interrupt that change that mm -hmm. and so that's where the first word <laughs> using the search engine came up no i think that's good ray you had something i did not but oh <laughs> out of habit you agree uh, completely though <laughs> out, of, out of habit <laughs> yeah i agree completely with what you guys are saying um so well when i go to that verse um uh, what's the other rendering of it? King James, uh, corrupt, corrupt good, good moral. manners, morals Man. is what it's talking about there. And, uh, my mind goes to, um, things that we just do because we do them out of habit because we were taught that they were good. All right. Like growing up in the South, you say, yes, ma'am. 
no ma'am yes sir no sir you open up the door for somebody when they're coming you take off your hat when you go inside you know just these good mannerisms that we've picked up over time these habits because we've been taught that they're good and that's the same thing with christianity when we read our bibles and we study them we learn what is good and what is bad and it's just a natural response that's our habit to respond in the proper manner and that's kind of what i get from that verse that troy brought up there you know habits are can come inadvertently or they can come purposefully and when i think about romans 12 1 2 the christian life we are creating a, a discipline into our life that's what a disciple is and so when we do think about the passage you know i buffet my body daily he's this idea i'm bringing it into subjection i'm in control of myself but how do we do that it it, it are it, it's these habits you know sunday you brought up going to worship i mean I think that's one of the things that, that is hurting many people today since the pandemic is there's a lot of people that's gotten out of the habit uh, of worshiping on, on the Lord's day and on that first day of the week. And it's, it's hurting now because, you know, it, it, you know, some people say, well, it's just habitual and yeah, but that's not a bad thing. You know, it, it, it really throws me off if for some reason I can't do that because I need that anchor to my week. I need that time to go and worship God and study. I'm thankful for that habit. Listen, that's the core of human nature. I mean, God made us that way. And then he even directed it that way as he was teaching us his will. And one of the first things that he did when he gave us the law, I say us, talking about mankind, but he gave it to the Israelites, the Hebrews. Well, what did he do? He, he set a habit. You're going to rest every seventh day just like i did and uh, when he created the the when he, I'm, if i'm using his words because he rested on the seventh day yes and then you see that over and over of he wants us to do that then the first day of the week we see those words over and over in the new testament these habits i found another verse that goes along with that and it's it's fascinating that uh i looked up what it is in the esv uh, it says it's in Hebrews chapter 10. I'll start in verse 24 and going into 25. Is that where you were going to? Yeah. Go, right. go for it. That no, you were ahead. there. Oh, well, I guess I'll, I've got it pulled up. You here. busted his uh, bubble. I could see it on his face. I know. He looks so dejected. In. <laughs> so I got to, I got to, well, I got to throw him with the bone here. Come on, Jeff, bring it on. He, well, he'd was, been trying to interject it. I was thinking of either that one or the one in Acts chapter 20. It says, when the disciples came together to break bread, that indicates a, a habit that had been formed uh, with them coming together on the first day of the week. Okay. And, uh, but, yeah, I had also in this other one, because that word manner is very interesting in verse 25. Yeah, now the ESV, see what yeah, I'll do a lot of yeah. times is take a verse. The yeah. ESV does translate that as habit. Oh, really? Read yeah, it in the read ESV. It. Well, the word itself is from the Greek word ethos. Yeah, I, that's what I was looking okay, up, which yeah. is, go ahead. Well, ethics. It's yeah. it's it's a uh, a learned pattern of behavior, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the ESV, so we, it says, okay. I'll start in 24, and yeah. let us consider how to steer up one another to love good works, mm -hmm. not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and in all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, the King James says manner and manner right so here you see in fact if you do a comparison of some of the other ones you'll see that word manner habit uh let's see what else we have the well they use habit a lot in lots of different translations i'm seeing the word habit over and over manner a custom here we go the one of them says the custom of some well you know you brought up a point the old testament law teaching habits um, you mentioned the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another one. Okay. First fruits. Yes. You go to harvest. What yes. are you going to do? I'm glad you brought that up because what did he tell the Jews to do three times a year? To feast. Yeah. To go to those three. They had to present themselves before the Lord three times a year in those different feasts. And so it's three consistent times, which by the way, uh, R.C. Foster does a great job pointing out that I never considered this till I was reading his book, Life of Christ. But do you realize the three times a year that they have to go and present themselves are not during the rainy seasons? That's that is interesting. I had never considered that before. But R.C. Foster was talking about the geography, the weather, and I was like, "The weather," you know. And then it, I was like, "Okay, well, that makes sense." 
because God knew, <laughs> you know, would you put that feast day at, at the rainy season? No, or do you do it when you know they're going to be able to travel from, it, it was a central location for them to travel from the whole land. So mm. anyway, interesting. I found a couple of other places where that same word is used. I've noticed in looking at the uh, Strong's that the word banner, uh, the way it's used, it there are many words that it is uh, uh, that it is translated as. But if you look at uh, in John chapter nineteen and verse forty, uh, they were taking the body of Jesus. They wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner, and that's that same word ethos of the Jews is to bury. In other words, it, it's that was a custom that they uh, that they kept up with. Uh, it's word all the word also is used in Acts 15 and verse one when it's talking about the uh, the men that were coming down from Judea, the Judaizing teachers. They taught the brethren and, and said, "Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved." And that word "manner" there is "ethos." In other words, uh, as they were te- binding the old law on them. Go what, ahead. What about the verses that talk? There's both the verse of Jesus as well as the verse of Paul that talks about that he goes into the synagogue as was his manner or his right. custom. Well, okay. there's, that there's was passages probably the same of thing, yeah. Jesus and praying it, it, as yeah. was his custom. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So when you say that's custom, that's the idea of habit as well. So well, the garden of Gethsemane, in fact, that's how they knew where to go a lot of times. Cause that's where Jesus, that Jesus frequently went there. Exactly. And so there's another aspect of habit. Right. So there's a word, if you're going to study this in scripture, you got to look up the words like manner, right? Custom, habit. Uh, what would be another one? As he would frequently do, or something like that. Yeah, something like yeah. that. And, Ray? Yeah, or like um, <laughs> when when was it when uh you have to edit that out. <laughs> when was it that um uh, Paul went to the riverside because it was custom or it was as want prayer was to be made there. That's where they would go often to pray Mm -hmm. was by the riverside. So since there wasn't a synagogue, that's where Paul went first when he came into that area was where habitually these people would meet to pray. Well, let's think about this for a minute though. We live in a chaotic world that it seems like today we are further away from God than we've been in the past. Would y'all agree with that? Yes. You know, generations before us were habitual people and what i mean by that is like used to in mississippi fish houses were a big thing uh and they still are now but not like they used to be because used to you had people that every friday night that's when they went out to eat and and that's what they were going to do they're going to go friday night to the fish house and that's why fish houses were only open like thursday friday saturday and they they had that habitual customer base that they were going to go they were going to do the same thing and we live in a society today. We we're not very habitual anymore, and I, and I can't help but wonder if that's not hurting us when it comes to Christianity because we're not forming habits. Because habits is what helps us to pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians five seventeen. It's what helps us to give to the Lord with the right hearts and priorities. It's what allows us to develop the. The customs, would that be the the right actions of how we respond? Mm-hmm. That it's by habit we 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 say this, we do this, and I think a lot of times people look down because they look at traditions as habits, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Ooh, no traditions." But maybe that's what we really need to be trying to do. And part of your spiritual walk is how do I create? habits oh customers. yeah mm-hmm. i can come i got something to answer that but before i do you know you're talking about that i would submit you said that we don't have habits anymore i would submit well the problem is we have bad habits now okay because and and you were guilty of one we're all all been tonight is reaching over internet you know that's a bad ha- can be a bad habit that we have <laughs> pulling this phone up all the time that can be a bad habit but people have other bad habits and it's interesting talking about habits If you talk about habits a lot of times to just ask a worldly person about habits, what are they going to say? They're going to talk about things like smoking, drinking, drugs, you know, vices, bad habits, coffee, Coffee. I'm sorry, but that's one of my bad habits if that's a bad habit. And so anyway, there is that aspect of it, but you brought that out. We need to be going back to or developing good habits. Well, I think that's what was meant by seeking the old 
paths. Mm-hmm. Remember Jeremiah saying that that we that was that was Israel's problem. They were so busy looking at all these other new fandangled things fandangled. <laughs> <laughs> that they they needed to get back to the old paths. They right. need to go back and ask them to observe and look. Right. And that's what we need to do today. We need people to observe and look that the old paths, those ancient ways, the ancient habits mm-hmm. right. are good ways. Exactly. And they will bless your soul if you do them. Yeah. Well, and we often use that word conversation, which is manner, manner of, of life. And and what Jeremiah... We do often do... Do we often do that? Well... Well, I, that's the way I define that word. It's a manner of life. We it's live the way for, we live our If you're set. a King James guy, I was going to say. I do. <laughs> if you're in the habit of well, the King James. Well, what did Jeremiah <laughs> tell the people to do about seeking the old paths and walk therein? Yeah. What is walk? Yeah, it's exactly. That's a, your conversation. That's the way you live. You live. Okay. Therein. All right. Perfect habit. point. Okay. Habit. Walking. All right. Yeah. Ephesians uh, over and over again. I don't mm-hmm. think I have it marked in this Bible, but uh, my other one I have underlined actually i might have it in this one all right we're supposed to walk worthy of the vocation we're called chapter 4 verse 1 mm-hmm. chapter 4 verse 17 where we walk not as other gentiles walk chapter 5 verse 2 we walk in love verse 8 we walk as children of light verse 15 do we walk circumspectly first john 1 7 we need to walk in the light so we're talking about a walk even walking is a habit it's something that is a learned behavior that we get used to that even if you like injure yourself and if you don't watch it, you can, uh, you can limp because you have to limp. But then if you don't correct that, you will forever limp, not because you have to, but because you just got in the habit of walking in that, in that fashion. And so just think about the, the places you're able to walk in your house without even turning the light on because it's just habit for you we oh the, you, you want to talk about being habitual let the power go off and how many times do you go walk into a room and try and turn the light on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know but but you don't even have to you don't have to even have to look yeah you don't even have to look where the light switch is you just know where it is don't you yeah because it's in your habits and the, and so we've got to make sure that this walk that we're in is mm-hmm. habitual right you know what you just made me think of? Something good, hopefully. Something good. Uh, I think it'll work. What is it called that a nun wears in the Catholic religion? A habit. <laughs> a habit. A clothing that they get up and they put on every day. That's what we have to have as Christians. Mm-hmm. And that's when I'm thinking about the habits that you used to, you know, you talk when you wake up, you pray. When you go to bed, you pray. Uh, how better of a way to start off the day is that then you wake up, you pray to God, you begin by putting on your Christian clothing, putting on your habit, and you are a Christian that day, and that's how you're going to go throughout the rest of your day. You start your habitual daily walk by praying unto God. I mean, that's that's something that's just there. Well, that's what God commanded the Israelites to do in Deuteronomy chapter 6. He was telling them, you need to teach your children, these things, they shall talk of them when they sit in your house and walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless to your eyes should be on the doorpost. I mean, that's a great way of saying you need to develop these habits. But isn't this something that, you know, to, to segue onto our next topic, it's, it's just natural that we, we, we were talking about this earlier. The problem is so many people professing Christianity today aren't wanting to change who they are. Um, I just had a Christian talk to me about that yesterday, being discouraged at not seeing people change who they are. It's just like, well, God's got, God's going to accept me the way I am. And I am what I am, you know? Uh, and they're not wanting to work on self. Instead, it's about what does the church offer me? And we were talking about it over dinner tonight, cultural Christianity. And this idea that, you know, we are, we are striving to, uh, we're not we're not being Christians because of trying to be more like Christ. We're just doing it because that's what culture is telling us. Uh, you might could expound upon it better. I think you worded that better. Uh, well, better whenever time. you said that, I thought about that that phrase a lot of people use, and they use it as an excuse to say, "I'm going to do what I'm going to do." That idea, "I am what I am." I, that's just who I am. Well, yeah. if you really stop and think about it, what should be the Christian attitude be? Should it be, "I am what I am"? Or should it be, I am 
what God wants me to be. Right. Or I, I want to be what God wants me to be. That should really be our attitude. Yeah. Right. It's, it, you know, and are we trying to shape ourselves into being like Christ? Are we trying to shape ourselves exactly. to fit some mold of what we say Christianity is today? And, you know, are we really working on it? it Cause you know, it's hard. I mean, I, I'll tell you right now. I mean, I beat myself up all the time over things. You go to the buffet too? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I think about it and it's like, oh, what did I do this? You know, even in preaching, you know, because I, I don't, when I preach, I want to preach with confidence because we need to be bold. Apostle Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and salvation. You know, you don't want to preach in a shameful way. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You know, uh, I think of the examples of Jesus that confronts the error, you know, whenever he would say stuff like you, you generation of vipers, you know, I mean, but you want to be loving as well, you know, and, and I, I could preach a sermon and then I could be like, well, did I, did I, did I say that? Did I come through clear enough or was I too apologetic? Or then, then I'll be like, well, no, did, was I too harsh? You know, did, did, it, did I come across loving enough? You know, because it's like, it's hard to be, find that balance as a Christian. And then there's times in life I'm like, well, I could have been kinder than what I was. Or, well, man, my patience. I, I really need to work on my patience. You know, or, you know, am I being positive enough to other people? Or did I come across negative? And, and all of this is stuff I'm trying to work on myself as a Christian so that I can really bear the fruit of the Spirit. I want to be loving. I want to be joyful. I want to be peaceful. I want to be the peacemaker of Matthew chapter five, you know, and I read Galatians five and I, I read Matthew five, one through seven. And, 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 I, and, and it's hard to shape yourself after mm -hmm. being like Christ. And, and once you get one thing fixed, it's like, man, there's another <laughs> one. You know? Well, that's one thing about scripture. Scripture is a magnifying glass. And the more you learn scripture and the more you start trying to conform your, your life and transform your, your mind to do the will of God, that magnifying glass gets bigger and bigger and you start seeing more than you've ever noticed. And so you start seeing more, you start seeing deeper into the sin. It, listen, it doesn't happen overnight. In fact, there's been scientific studies done that say habits take, I've heard, I've read different reports, but habits take a minimum of say about 21 days of doing something before it, your mind accepts it as a habit. And mm -hmm. so if you're doing something for, you know, the first time that you don't normally do after you've done it about three weeks, 21 days or 20, sometimes as much as 28 days, then it becomes a habit. Well, think right. about that. The human nature is like that. That God knows that he created us. Right. And that's why as Ray pointed out a minute ago, we forget things and we need to be reminded. We need to continue to learn these things and it's good to keep going to the scriptures to keep focused on God's will. Amen. Right. And I, I think of that term, uh, muscle memory, Uh huh. you know, and that, that kind of reminds me of things that we do repetitively as time goes on, becomes very quick, uh, easy for us. And, yep. and, uh, you know, and, and I've also heard the expression that, uh, you know, as you know, that we can become creatures of habit, if you will, that we are in a way creatures oh, of absolutely. habit. Absolutely. That, that, uh, that we have our routines, yeah. we do things and, and, you know, I was raised, there was no question about where we were going to be Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday evening. And you get into the habit of it and that becomes, that becomes muscle memory too. I know I need to And be it feels there. weird or right. bad if you don't do it. That's right. And I, I think that's, that's where hurt, your heart is. And I think that's hurting us in the church yeah. today because we don't have families emphasizing that they're not not saying this is what we are going to do mm -hmm. and above all yeah it, it, it you know my children they know on sunday what we're doing mm -hmm. they know wednesday night what we're doing and right. i'm thankful my parents taught me that way and if you're listening to this and you're not doing that with your family you really need to examine that uh you know look you know what are you what habits are you teaching them because if you're not teaching them that habit i promise you, you're teaching them another habit there's my, my children know my habit. You know what my habit is on Sunday night, y'all? My, ha my habit is to put on our menu that we're going to eat grilled cheese and tomato soup. And we do that sometimes. But my children know me. My wife knows me. 
the habit normally is for me to sit there and say, I'm tired. I don't feel like going home and cooking. She's like, I don't either. I said, let's go Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so by the time I get through to Sunday night, you know, you know what I'm talking about, preachers? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're tired, right? Yeah. You know? right. And, and so by the time I get through to Sunday night, it's like, let's just go sit down at Cracker Barrel. It's right. just so much easier. Right. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking about it, you know, in a year, how far are we going? Troy, I, before we close out tonight, I just want to say this. Uh, for, sorry that the show, you know, wasn't able to be broadcast live. I love sitting down talking with you guys. This has been fun for an hour. Um, but, uh, I do miss the audience that really adds something to it, but I was just looking around the room and I was like, this looks like a real studio. Uh, you know, it, cause I was like seeing these lights behind you and these different things that, that, you know, if you look on the cameras, I was going to say cameras kind of give it away for the most part, <laughs> but for the most part, you can't there. There's, There's one camera in the shot right there. Yeah, yeah. That, well, we got that one. Come on, Ray. I was about to brag you on there. <laughs> He's uh, got a camera in the shot. Uh, but um, <laughs> Two cameras. There's another one in the top up there, too. But, I mean, Ray, <laughs> Ray does a lot of work for this show. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's see if I can get this. What, what are you trying you to zoom it in? Oh, here we go. Look at that. Yeah, you can start it's it. moving around. around, yeah. Woo, fancy. See all the stuff we got in here. Yeah, a bunch of things. If you... If you're not able to tell, we got stuff for the Zoom to be able to work and uh, stuff off to the side behind Troy. And um, But uh, Ray does a lot of work every week, makes sure everything's set up and working right over with the switcher. And uh, I just appreciate his dedication to what he's done. And something that's behind the scenes that some people don't see is um, for Have a Bible Question and um, Have a Bible Question Live, uh, there are times that our partnership with GBN helps us out uh especially with adam vaughn uh he does some freelance work for us and stuff some stuff through gbn for us uh when we need right. technical support over things and so we really appreciate them they've helped us out a lot uh uh no gbn is what i meant uh <laughs> you, you uh, troy was sending me a message like oh you meant gnt uh adam works with gnt as well as well as gbn and uh good news today we've been able to partner with them and to get a lot done and uh so we're just thankful for that. Uh, you don't know this. There's actually a software they have that we can't afford <laughs> at GBN. And uh, two of the markets we would not be able to send to, two or three of them, if it wasn't for them taking our show, rendering it in a different format, and sending it out for us. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I love it when brethren are able to work together. All yeah. right, we're going to get this off of here. That way, Troy, uh, not Troy, but uh, Jeff can get this thing rendered out, get it uploaded. That way some people hopefully can see it tonight. Okay. Um, don't forget it'll be June 15th when we come back. Going to take a couple weeks off. Uh, we might air like a best of show or something like that. If we can, um, uh, not making any promises. It's going to be a couple busy weeks. Uh, if you happen to be in the Pensacola area, our homecoming weekend, I mean, it is right upon us, uh, that Friday, June the 4th, five to seven, we got a fish fry here at the church building so that we can fellowship with area Christians and then from 7 to 9, we're going to have an area-wide gospel singing. And then on Saturday, we're going to honor uh, five graduates, I believe it is. Is it five, Ray? Four? Jonathan Bates. Jonathan Bates, Mike Elaney, Adam Cox, Matthew Oklajani, and Jeffrey King. All right. That's, that's five. That's five. And oh, so, Jeffrey's going to be graduating. Yeah. All yeah, right. We're, we're, we're running him through the exercise. <laughs> uh, and so um, he doesn't get his diploma until he's finished. But uh, oh, that's what I was wondering. That's what because I, I knew that uh, Jeffrey started at a different time than those other guys. Mm -hmm. That's why I was. They actually already have their diplomas too. But this will be their graduation exercise, and and then we're also going to honor Brenda Brantley, who retired from being our full time secretary here at the nice, school. Nice. Uh, she couldn't put up with us anymore, so she <laughs> retired. <laughs> and then on Sunday, we're going to have Mark Teske here to speak to us, and then um, Kate Summers, one of our graduates and faculty members. And then that afternoon, Jonathan Bates is going to speak to us. Uh, nice. So hopefully have a great homecoming weekend. But here on the show, we're Lord willing, be back June the 15th. Troy, hope you have a great vacation. You too, brother. Uh, thank you. And appreciate all those guys, all you guys in this room. Look forward to doing another year with y'all.